Hello, and welcome to the River Mountain Model Railroad. On this episode, we're going to do a product spotlight. Today's product is the Scale Trains HO Scale Thrall 48 foot coil steel car. So let's go ahead and get started. Please note that this review is on the rivet counter line. The rivet counter has more details and detail parts added for a more prototypical looking model than the operator line. The reporting marks and road name for this version is the Central of Tennessee Railway and Navigation, CTRN 500077. The model comes in standard packaging material, including an outer box and inner packaging and protective material. Uh, once you remove the material, uh, you can see here that we have a clamshell or two-part basic uh, plastic packaging. Uh, it comes some with literature uh, for information on the prototype. Uh, you can see here it also has quite an extensive uh, detail parts list. It has extra material. Uh, in here we have some roller bearing caps and we also have some dividers for the, the um, steel coils. When taking this apart, uh, this particular one had two pieces of tape on each end, which I had to cut or remove just to get the top part off. The model comes with some interior packing material. Uh, this is just a, a very thin film or layer of uh, plastic or some sort of material to protect the model. Uh, you can see it has got six coils here that you can put on the inside if you want to. When handling the model, um, I would be careful. I don't want to say that this is delicate, but where you grab and reach and hold on the parts uh, should be deliberate because uh, we'll take a look at all the fine detail parts that they put on here. And as you can see, it, uh, and I was really surprised that these shell covers are just laying on there. I'm surprised that uh, they're not attached a little bit more secure to that flat car. They just come right off of there. You can see the detail parts on the bottom of the model there. Yeah. That, that center coil um, divider just came right off. So I would be deliberate on how you grab the model, especially getting it out of the packaging because we'll go over all of these detail parts. I think I mentioned in one of my other videos that when you're unboxing this material or these models, uh, you should look for loose or missing parts. Um, as you can see here, here is a loose part. This is a hook that goes on the end of this cover that help hold that grab iron on. So I'm going to need to reattach that uh, before I put this on the layout. So let's start on the bottom of the car. Uh, this thing is loaded with details. Uh, as you can see here, we have separately applied braking items. Uh, there's the brake cylinder, there's the reservoir, brake lines, triplet valve. But as you can see, we have a load of separately applied brake details underneath the car, standard trucks and wheels on each end. Here you can see the coupler cut lever and the air hose. Coupler cut lever and air hose on each end. But as you can see, it's, it, this thing is loaded with detail. Here, let me uh, flip this over to the other side. Like I said, I wouldn't be uh, treat this delicately or be afraid to grab it, but if you're gonna grab it, I would probably be specific uh, where you locate uh, your fingers when you're picking this stuff up, but you can see all the nice separately applied under rigging and brake details for this whole model. 
The interior of the car has simulated wood material for the coil steels. This centerpiece is removable that has pins and pinholes that that sits in. As you can see, looking down from the top, uh, we've got a walkway that goes all the way around this car, which is very nice. I've seen some other videos on YouTube where people have had problems with that walkway warping. I have not had that issue with this warping, but some people have had that problem. If you're interested in seeing a video on how to fix that, go over to Todd Stevens. He's at 6005 Entertainment. Once again, Todd over at 6005 Entertainment has a nice video on how to fix your walkway if it's warping or has warped during packaging, shipment, or use. So while we're looking down on top of the car, let's go ahead and take our steel coils and place them in here. Uh, as you can see, is you can arrange these steel coil any steel coils any way you would like. Uh, I run mine with all six in there. Uh, it helps add weight to it. Uh, but you can arrange these any way you want. You can take these dividers that come with the, the kit or the model and arrange them in any way you want that if you want to run two or if you want to run one or whatever way that way they're not sliding and shifting around in there while you're running your uh, your model around your layout uh, but these are pretty nice uh, they look pretty real they've actually got some weight to them which is it's kind of nice these steel coils are actually metal got a magnet here and you can see that uh, they're actually metal. So they do uh, use some sort of metallic material in the construction of these, which is pretty nice. Taking a look at the sides of the car, uh, you can see here we have separately applied stirrups. You can see some of our detail braking items that are mounted underneath the, the car and just going right along you can see all of our separately applied uh, finely detailed parts uh, like I said earlier I'm really surprised that these covers just sit on there uh, you would think that they would press fit a little bit better than what is on here or maybe I just need to figure something out uh, this is my first uh, coil steel car so maybe I need to figure it out taking a look at the ends this is the B end you can see we have our separately applied brake wheel over here you can see our coupler cut lever here's our coupler here's our air hose along with more separately applied grab irons which also include grab irons that are on the hoods that go around the side Okay, let's weigh the model. So you can see here that this HO scale model is approximately seven and a quarter inches long. Now, according to NMRA recommendations, a seven inch model should weigh approximately 4.5 ounces. A seven and five eighth inch model should weigh 4.81 ounces. So once we get all of our parts on here, and this is empty, we're going to shoot for somewhere between 4.5 ounces and 4.8 ounces. And you can see here, see here, empty without the steel coils is 1.7 ounces, which is well below the NMRA recommended standards. So... Let's go ahead and get our steel coils in here and see how much this changes. So there's one. There's two. Three. Four. Five. So all six steel coils are on there. 
and I'm sure you were watching as I was putting them on there, is we are now at a total weight of 5.15 ounces, which is pretty nice. And I think I've said before in my videos, I like my stuff to run a little bit heavy. They, uh, they track better a little bit heavier. But uh, you can see the difference in weight there. And like I said, according to NMRA standards, HO scale, a seven inch model should be about 4.5 ounces. A seven and five eighth model is 4.8 ounces. Uh, and you can see here fully loaded with those steel coils, we are over that recommendation. Well, that concludes this product spotlight. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. And as always, thanks for watching the River Mountain Model Railroad.